Hi guys, I'm Frederick from Opeth and you're watching Metal Path TV from Greece. Uh, we're here in Germany, in Stuttgart. We're having Frederick from Opeth here. We're playing tonight at LK. Welcome to Metalpath TV. How are you, first of all? Very good. Just kind of woke up. <laughs> yes, it's, it's always some to stuff like that. Well, being on the road for quite a while, first in North America, the late uh, last two months, and now in Europe. Uh, how is going on so far? Very good. I think we play really good shows. We were tight and uh, starting up with doing 24 shows in mm -hmm. North America and Canada and Mexico. was a good warm up for the European tour, absolutely. Yeah. So it's going really good. I think we play good shows. Yeah, Feel solid. Perfect. It's nice when you get over that first shows you play, you rehearse many new songs, mm -hmm. but after 10, 12 shows, everything is just small details, clicks. And yeah, cool. Well, from the very beginning, up the songs were quite long durations. Um, how difficult is for you to choose the specific set list for its gig? Well, we try to pick a song from each album, but mm -hmm. we still want to play two or three songs from the latest to promote that. So on this tour, I believe we play a song from each album, apart from the very two first. Yeah, okay. So it's a pretty good mix, I think. We try to pick songs we know are a bit of favorites, like Deliverance. Is, that type of song is most likely going to be on the set list. Um, so there's a few of those, but. It, on this this tour we do these special shows with the longer set and then we play okay. songs from Deliverance like the, by the pain I see in others we never played before and so it's fun to bring out some B-sides we never played you know like <laughs> cool. so we always try to change it up for each tour yeah, but some songs will stay, stay you know. yeah. of course you have to promote the new album and it's going to be focused there, there. So like two, three more songs than yeah. the others, yes, of course. And it's, well, you know, many of the songs are more than ten minutes long and all that, so... Yeah, exactly. Well, as I've seen, it was aired in YouTube from several fans that you do a potpourri from the requests of the fans. Yeah, so we did that more, more in North America and it we did, really didn't plan it, something that just okay. happened. and. Sometimes we we got put on the spot and yeah. oh shit, you know, it was kind of fun. You know, if people here in Europe start screaming for it. It might happen, but very spontaneous thing that kind okay. of developed on its own. So it wasn't planned. No. Anyway, okay, that's cool. Well, I've got another question about the tour. You have SAG to do with you, yeah. the supporting act. Uh, do you get to choose the supporting act, or is it? Um, only with booking agencies? Uh, no, we, we got the suggestions. Uh, it was decided quite shortly before this tour was about mm -hmm. to happen. Um, and they, their name got brought up and I was immediately, yes, they're great, you know. Because I, I used to listen to them, the very two first albums. And so yeah. I think that could be a good mix with them playing with us. And yeah, of course. They're really good. Well, you have also appeared the last summer in some festivals and then you do the tour dates in America and now in Europe. Do you have any preference between festivals or small venues, gigs? I prefer venues before because you're more in control okay. with sound check, uh -huh, yeah. uh, gear, festivals, the changeover can be very short and usually what we hear, what our monitor mm. set up for is usually not as good as when we do our own shows but it's i mean i like them both it's fun to play in, in front of lots like, like a massive audience if you play at whack and stuff like that it's of course a very powerful feeling so well i've seen the the tour dates and uh, it's going to be a break the two months about two months uh, yeah. between uh, december and february where you're going to start again in australia do you take this break to decompose the stress or would 
be any other bookings? No, we're going to be home for that period. Okay. Because then we have, we, we're planning to go to South America oh. after that and then uh, a trip to North America again. Playing some festivals and some uh, shows, shows on our own in the, in the spring sometime. So, and so then it's, gonna it's probably going to be a lot of festival in the summer. Mm -hmm. Gordon said yes to a few, but I don't know how official that is now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, but what I don't, what I noticed was that also Greece is not part of the two. No, but usually we go to Greece. Yeah, that's like a, a separate thing. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Uh, not as part of the two. No, we usually go like a weekend play Thessaloniki in Athens. So I really hope that will happen. We we always go go there once in every album. So. Yeah, there's no reason we shouldn't go this time. So, it was a great support last time we were there. Yes, good. Uh, I hope that you like the audience in Greece. Yeah, very much. <laughs> very energetic. And so it's a good vibe, really. Let's move to the 12th album called Shoshosh of Opeth. Uh, now that it's out, and so far the reviews and the critics were a bit polarized so far that I have read of. Uh, how do you feel about the result of the album? Um, I'm quite happy with it. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, in some songs a bit more heavier, a bit more guitar driven. Yes. And uh, that was something we talked about before doing it. It's still, um, maybe it's a bit more direct, more melodic in some parts. Uh, still, it has some tricky moments as well. So I'm happy about the result. I think it's cool that every song is very different. And it's, um, I like the fact that the drums are a bit heavier than the previous productions. And, you know, it's always difficult with mixes. We Everybody has their different opinions and wills, but I think it got there in the end. Yeah, of course, well, do you actually get to read the reviews and all the stuff that being said about the album? And did I haven't read as many reviews, maybe it's yeah. one Swedish review. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when it's out there, we just, you know, carry on, basically. Yes. Of course, it's fun, you know, you appreciate a good review. And we got some good, but maybe I should find some more bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as I have read, there are some bad ones. That did this one, exactly, this negative review, that did in any way affect you? No, not really. I mean, it's not for everybody to like. If you don't like it, it's fine. You, know, you can uh, listen to something else. I mean, for us, the first filter is that we feel happy about. You know, that we did our best, and after that, we can't do much more. So. Definitely well. In Opeth, as also in many other bands, there is a leader. In this case, <laughs> Mikkel yeah. Uh How is your collaboration with him regarding the compositions? And uh, how can you put your personal elements in the music of Hobbes? Yeah, absolutely, a little bit. He writes the majority of the stuff, yeah. and uh, he asks me to come down to put on guitar solos and you know, kind of put your input into those, maybe. <laughs> and um, he likes to hear feedback, and on this album, we co-wrote one track together, we called The Strange Room. When you're tired of waiting, when time is not on your side, when you're tired of hating me, you no longer want to hide, you start to the exist more than 25 years. You were in the group for about nine years, if I'm right? Yeah, it's in the beginning of next year it's going to be ten. ten. Okay, cool. Um, 
how do you see the future of the band and could you imagine that you could play another to end the year some more? I hope so, really. <laughs> That's my motto, rock till you drop. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, th I still think we have, we feel, uh, you know, we love what we do. Especially the creative side also, being in the studio. Mm -hmm. That's something that Michael really enjoys, that part of it. And um, I, still, I still see a future in us, absolutely. Creatively wise and touring wise. All right. We still, we got still, we're getting some pains now. Everybody's back is hurting. And we have to headbang less because we get like nerves. Yeah. Like Jeff Charles said, too young to die, too old to rock and roll. No, put it the other way. <laughs> You're never too young to rock and roll. Never too old to rock and roll, right? No, no, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, what we do, you know. So I, I hope we can continue for a long time, but we'll take one album at a time. Well, step by step, all of music have progressed, and a lot of uh, nostalgic uh, 70s elements from prog rock and psychedelic rock into the music of all of. And also, there are many, there are a lot of new bands that do this, this thing. Mm. How do you see how? What your thoughts about that? It's For fun. example, I mean, Year of the Goat, um, <laughs> Blue Spills, the kind of inservities, mm -hmm. you know, feeling and all this metal right nowadays. Well, I think it's cool that that era gets attention and bands get inf influenced by it. Mm -hmm. It's a heritage, you know. <laughs> That's where the early metal comes from. And, you know, as long as they enjoy what they do and. Experiment, you know, that's cool, I think. Yeah. So, your thoughts on the future of the metal genre in general, from the extreme until to the those stoner and psychedelic bands? Do you listen to any new bands and do you have any thoughts about them? Yeah, I mean, the bands we toured with now, I listen to a bit, you know, like mm -hmm. to, let's, let's listen to their discography. Like uh, Sog now, checking out their new album, and uh, also the Danish artist Mirkir opened up for us. She had a very beautiful voice, I think. And recently in the States, we toured with the Sword, so I hadn't listened much to them before. And uh, so it's, in, it's very interesting, I think. It's a lot of interesting bands out there. But I don't keep track of everybody. Maybe I should. Uh, it's a lot of bands also. It's kind of difficult also with uh, all this digital uh, thing that's going on with uh, on the internet. This everything's yeah. running fast and it's a faster try to society yes, overall. Exactly. But uh, I, I believe a lot of people takes the time to listen to an album from the beginning to the end still. But I guess a lot of kids is just listening 10 seconds here mm -hmm. and there. I don't know. It's always beautiful to take the album, the LP or the CD and just took some time on it. Mm. Give some time, yes. But, well, the Sweden. It is a country that makes great music from Kantelmas to Bathory, from Dutch and Greek at the Gates and Tumd. Opus, of course. There's always there's always been too many influential bands in metal from from Sweden. What uh, makes Sweden so special? Produce that such great music. Of course, they, they do also now other stuff like ABBA and things like that. Europe, not only metal, but is it something that makes it so special? It's a good question. I think uh, <laughs> I don't really have a good answer to it uh, because it's not a huge population if you compare it. Maybe so. I guess people just sit around playing all all the time when it's really dark. <laughs> During the winter time, maybe this. That's what we did, at least, you know. Like for bands, when I grew up, for instance, the yeah, this uh, studio, student circles you could uh, form, mm -hmm. and they gave you a rehearsal room, and you could borrow a vocal PA. So that was kind of very supportive when we grew up. Yeah, great help have to a, have this yeah. kind of stuff. Imagine that we are going to send the spacecraft or something like that to the universe, to large space, 
and we have to put a top five records or top three of all time records that humankind have produced. Uh, and you had to choose those five or three, well, oh. whatever, which one would be? Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Black Sabbath, uh, Dark Side of the Moon could be suitable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pink yes. Floyd. Uh, Else. Something that you won't get easily bored with. It's <laughs> a tricky one, really. The yes. third one. You take your time. Just another one, flight. <laughs> Maybe. No. Maybe Twenty-one, twelve with Rush. Absolutely. <laughs> It's difficult. Yeah. I picked those three <laughs> for now.